Big money. Here comes the big one. <laughs> This is the engine I'm talking about today. I downloaded this on Thursday. It was a channel member's uh, engine. He's also works for me every now and then in the shop. This is a 406 small block Chevy. It's got my ported Dragon Slayers. It's 10 to one compression ratio. This is what we're talking about today. You'll get to hear more of the specs from this. If you feel at some point I probably made an error in this video, please put it in the comments because you know I'm sometimes I'm an idiot too. So enjoy this video and hopefully you learn something out of it. Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video is a video about the difference between a naturally aspirated motor, or NA, versus a turbo motor. Um, because I had dynoed a motor last Thursday, and I want to share those results with you, but I want to talk about why it didn't make as much power NA as you might expect from the pieces that were there. We'll talk about why it did that and the reasons for it, because there are a lot of myths concerning turbo motors and probably one of the ones I hear um, always have like a little bit of hint of truth to them, but not entirely. For instance, you've probably heard this one. The more power the motor makes in A, the more it will make with boost or even a different power adder. That's true to a point and we'll get to talk about that today. So um, let's just start with that one because that's probably one of the one that gets heard the most. So. Let me explain. So when we think about a naturally aspirated engine, the only way we can make power is to use everything that's available in our atmosphere. That's all that we have to work with. So the thing on a naturally aspirated motor, we focus on making as much cylinder pressure as we possibly can with the air that exists. So we will add compression ratio. We'll do different things with the camshaft to get, for, to get air in because we got nothing blowing it. It's simply coming in through the atmosphere. So on the camshafts wise, we're trying to Get the cylinder pressure where we need it to be with compression ratio and with camshaft events to get it where it needs to be and that makes the best power the thing is though obviously on a naturally aspirated motor we keep bumping up that compression ratio say 16 to 1 we're going to keep making power you would think if we're using that logic from that term that if you make more na power you should make more you can make more as a turbo motor too the thing is if you just put a turbo or a blower on, let's say a 16 to one motor, it's not so much that the motor itself shouldn't, I mean, you would think in theory should make more power. The thing that is the limiting factor is your fuel. And you're like, well, don't run pump gas, run something good. Every fuel has a point where it just doesn't work very well anymore. And what I mean by that is that you're gonna have pre-ignition and uh, detonation issues. They're just gonna happen. So when you increase cylinder pressure through either a camshaft events or by bumping the compression ratio up, you need that for NA. But at a certain point, the fuel just can't take it. So when you add boost in, you're actually increasing that cylinder pressure even more, and then you've hit your limit. So the thing about that statement that's true is, at a certain boost level, and usually it's pretty moderate, say around 10 pounds or so, a really good NA engine um, will be better with boost than a dedicated turbo motor. And you might say, well, what makes a dedicated turbo motor? Well, I'll show you more in a minute. But the thing that's done on that is they're trying to reduce um, cylinder pressure by camshaft and other things that I'll show you as well so that it can add more boost without hurting things. Because a really good NA engine with a high compression ratio and uh, NA camshaft, and I know you're like, NA camshaft's a turbo camshaft. Mm, to a point, that's also one of those sayings. To a point, I know you're saying that, there's gonna reach a point, a moderate boost level, where it will make more power than a dedicated boost engine. But beyond that, what's gonna happen? Here's what's gonna happen. You're just gonna break stuff. And you're like, no, you're not. No, what'll end up happening is, you're gonna have cylinders that all of a sudden, you just start burning up. And you can't explain why you've like, you added fuel, you've done what you can, you just start messing it up. It, it, it won't go any higher. Or um, you'll find that you're adding more boost if the engine happens to stay, uh, stay alive. Um, but you're not really going any faster because you're at the limits of what that fuel and what you've done can do. So on a turbo motor, we reduce that. So I know that hopefully that it kind of explains things and I'm gonna show you what exactly that means because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you things we do to reduce the cylinder pressure on the cylinder heads. I'm gonna show you some 
dyno charts with some really good NA uh, engines. And then I'll show you the turbo motor that just got dyno its dyno chart. And I'll show you why they're different and the reason for it. And hopefully that gets you a better understanding of what's going on. Let's first start off with this. In an NA engine, we maximize quench. And for those who are unfamiliar with what quench is, pretty much anything, you could, if you drew a circle around the, where the cylinder is, and then you have your chamber here, this is a cylinder head, anything beyond what the chamber is, that's considered your quench area. In an NA engine, we want as little quench area as possible. In other words, we prefer it be perfectly, like the chambers to be as small as possible as it possibly can be, so that we can maximize squeezing all the air into a fine, confined area to speed up the burn, to get the maximum amount of um, energy from the air and fuel that's came in. That's the idea. That whole process speeds up the burn. Great for an NA, horrible for turbo or anything with boost or even power editor like nitrous. And the reason for it is if you speed the process up, you have more likely to cause detonation and pre-ignition conditions. Not that it's always going to happen, it just creates a situation where it's more likely to happen. So in other words, having a tight quench, your tuning window becomes smaller than having a larger quench. So on a turbo motor, we will do something like this. Now this head's, it's actually a um, headhunter that a customer I had ported for, and he ran nitrous actually, but it's the only one that happened to have it here, so I'd show you. What you see here, this spot you see this the chambers have been softened now actually he had some damage and the cha the softening actually used to be quite a bit more and would go all the way out here what it you, it's really hard to see from the camera view but essentially what's happened this was done with the cnc machine is it took the quench pad area and started a hundred thousandths from the cylinder wall and it would put a cone it dug a cone like a hemi into where the chamber is and it was a cone that way what this did is one it made the chamber size increase. So our compression ratio decreased because again, we're trying to manage cylinder pressure. So we can reduce cylinder pressure by doing that. Uh, also, it reduces the quench area because now we're slowing down the burn and we're able to get the fire, in, the, in theory, you have a better path to get the fire towards these end areas where the end gases might remain that would cause pre-ignition or detonation. So having this here is great for turbo. It's not always the best for NA. Now, not necessarily though. There are different degrees in which we can make the softening of the chamber. So there's like a seven and a five. In NA engines, some NA, high end NA engines also use softening like this, but they're a much lesser degree of cone. So it's virtually flat. And the idea is just so you can get more of the burn out to the ends. On a turbo nitrous supercharged engine, this cone's deeper. So in other words, it's much, less so our quench area is far reduced where we're slowing down the burn it's helping it so that i can add more boost to this engine or nitrous to this engine without having problems of detonation or pre-ignition pre that's something that an na engine a deep cut like these is not good for power not at all we need that faster burn for an na engine not for a turbo or power adder. I just wanted to show you that because it's here. Now this engine that I showed you the video at the beginning on, it had this done in a very heavy degree, so seven degree, its chambers were 74 cc's. It was a 23 degree head similar to this. Um, it was one of my ported Dragon Slayers, but its chambers were also softened like this. But again, it this one had to be repaired so that some of the softening is gone. But it had a, the one that you saw the video on, its softening came all the way out. It was a deeper cut and it made the chambers gain 10 cc's. So that's one thing. Because the chambers gained 10 cc's, the compression ratio was 10 to one, but it's not the same as a 10 to one NA engine because it's quench pad area is pretty much non-existent. Um, the other thing besides just doing the chamber softening is you might know that we also run more distance between the piston head, the top the crown of the piston, to the head itself. So in other words, we're increasing the quench even more that way. So for instance, on an NA engine, I typically run between an 039 and an 041 head gasket. In that turbo motor you saw, his was a 51 with a heavy deal like this. So it's got even more that way. Also the piston's in the hole as well. So 
a lot of that's done simply to reduce our, our quench area. So there's one part, but here that's horrible for NA power. Here's the next thing that also we do to kind of help with the turbo motor stuff. The next thing to help a turbo motor make more power with a turbo and, ex and higher boost levels has to do with the camshaft. Now I warn you, this next part is gonna get a wee bit technical, so bear with it. Hopefully follow along and do the best you can. So I'm gonna explain some concepts first to hope you get it. Essentially, I've drawn the camshaft lobes, and this may seem confusing to you because I start with the exhaust and then the intake, because essentially that's how the whole period happens. So you can think of this as your exhaust lobe, it opens, it's that peak lift, it closes. The intake valve actually is starting to open as the exhaust valve's closing. I don't know if several of you may not know, I mean, I shouldn't say several, you can never estimate people, but the intake valve does actually open before the exhaust valve's closing. This creates something called overlap. That's where the two valves are actually open at the same time. And then it goes through its process. This overlap is very critical and I'll talk more about it in a second. The distance between the center line of the exhaust lobe and the center line of the intake lobe is called the LSA or lobe separation angle. That's the distance between there and there. The opening point, say 50 thousandths lift on the exhaust from here to here and the closing at 50 thousandths, this distance in between is your exhaust duration. The same thing would apply for your intake duration. There's some of the basics. On an NA engine, the most important thing, period, with an L, uh, an NA engine is the overlap. That's everything for an NA engine. Where it happens is, and how much of it, it's the most important part. Here's the reason why. If you think about it the way an engine works, when that exhaust valve's opening, all the hot gas is, in, is leaving. As it leaves, it's creating a pressure drop inside the cylinder. So that's the reason why we actually open the intake valve sooner um, before the exhaust valve closes because there's actually a pressure drop in the cylinder from the exhaust leaving that when we open the intake valve it will start pulling the air from the intake side even though the exhaust valve is still open so it's creating that draw and then we close it how we do this is super super important for an na engine if you mess this part up the engine just won't simply make power it's it's so important and here's the thing that overlap that you need is more based also on an RPM that the engine will turn. So you might need more, R more overlap, less overlap, depending on the RPM you want it to occur at. There's a lot. It's very, very, very important. So on an NA engine, that overlap, we usually have more than you would have, say, with a turbo camshaft. And you might say, why? Well, you probably have figured this out already, but if you haven't, let me explain. On a turbo motor, if you do like an NA engine like this, at moderate boost levels, you've got so much gas leaving that it still has some draw in, that the boost is also coming through this area as well, aiding in it coming out into the intake valve. However, once you get to a certain boost level, that's why it's not false that, um, to say an NA cam is a, is a turbo cam. To a point, a certain point when you get in the higher boost levels, the back pressure here is really high. So having that overlap period open, if you open this intake like this and you've got 20, say 25 pounds on the exhaust side and only 20 pounds on the intake side, guess which way it's gonna go? With the exhaust is coming back through, you're hurting yourself. So on a turbo motor, a dedicated one, we reduce that. And how they reduce it is typically they will spread the lobe separations out. So if you look here, if I tighten this up, so if it's tighter, it'd be like a lesser number, say 104, 106, those are tight. A wider one would be like a 112. So one of the things on a turbo motor is they usually widen this to reduce this overlap. Now, that's not the only way you can reduce it, essentially. Each one of these points, there's actually four here, and exhaust opening, exhaust closing, intake opening, and exhaust and intake closing. Those four events create everything. So you could do other things to, to reduce the overlap as well. For instance, you could reduce your exhaust duration. Uh, you could reduce your intake duration. You can move the vents to different points, but that changes the LSA. So there's a lot that goes into it. But essentially, one of the things, the easy way, is just you could just spread them apart. The other thing is, obviously, you can reduce the intake and exhaust duration, and that would also reduce it. 
And that is also kind of what turbo motors also is do because on an intake, on an NA motor, we usually have way more degrees of exhaust duration, sorry, than we would with a turbo motor because if you keep that exhaust open, there's only way you could do that when you could add more to where it's opening, which is a loss, um, or you can add more towards this side, which means more overlap, or you'd have to push it this way. So typically the split between intake and exhaust duration on an NA engine is closer than would be on most NA, NA engines. So a turbo motor actually has uh, less uh, difference between intake and exhaust duration. So hopefully that explains some of it. And all this has to do with cylinder pressure too. Because then that's the other thing on the NA engine. Why, besides having the overlap like this, we have more overlap. On an NA engine, this distance from here to here, that also has an effect on cranking pressure. The more cranking pressure you have, remember, we're not, we don't have boost to add to that, the density in the air. We have to make it up through here. Um, this usually is smaller than you would have with a, well, cinch sometimes. It would be smaller so you could have more pressure. The things you do here on a turbo cam, you're actually reducing your cranking pressure versus here. Um, and why? Again, so the engine lifts. <laughs> so there's different things. This, a, a turbo motor, or turbo camshaft, a dedicated one, will not be as good for an NA engine. Less overlap. Um, it can't extend its range because the exhaust duration is not as much. There's a bunch of things. But what I'm trying to get at, the premise of this is, an NA camshaft to a point is good for turbos. And after that, you really need a dedicated one for the events that are happening. So let me show you some dyno charts to show you some examples of different things so you can see how far different this is from camshaft to camshaft on the same size engine. So let me just show you some. I'm about stuff. to show you dyno charts of all 406 small block Chevys. And the last one's the turbo motor that you saw at the beginning of the video. These are different combinations, but they're all sort of, I would say they're race. So let me kind of get going with this. This first one was the engine I competed with in 2008 at the Engine Master Challenge. This engine, which you can see the specs down here, 406, compre 406 10 and a half to one compression ratio, had some Dart Pro ones I had ported. This one actually had a solid flat tap of camshaft with like a 625 lift, might have had more. I was just going off memory. The intake duration was 244. I can't remember the exhaust, but it might have been 246. 106 LSA, 1000 CFM uh, Demon carburetor, 4150. Hurricane that was ported. So even though it was a flat tap of camshaft, you're like, how'd you get 625 lift? It had shaft rockers on it that had a 1.9 ratio on the intake 1.8 exhaust. If you look what it did, it made 581 horsepower. Yeah, and it did it at 6,000 RPM. Because this engine master's challenge, you'd focus on not just a peak number, it's the whole range. So you really focus more on torque, especially down low, which it did. I mean, it had 520 or 529, 28 foot pounds of torque at 5,000 RPM, but that spreads pretty good. That was a really good motor, uh, especially for flat tap it. So if you look at it, again, these are actually pretty close. So if you look at the intake and exhaust duration split, that's not too far from a uh, turbo motor, but the LSA, there's no way 106 on a heavy turbo motor you would run that. You just wouldn't uh, for what I just showed you. If you added like 25 pounds of boost, you'd, you'd, have, some, you'd have some issues. So but here's why, by the way. Not only is the exhaust coming back through, it's heating up the intake charge. So you, that creates more chance of a pre-ignition. So yeah, the, the camshaft's important. Now, switching combinations, still 406. This one got to turn into 11.5 to 1 compression ratio. This had my Brodix 10X RI, which are a raised runner head, 23 degrees still. Saw roller, because this was for the 2012 Engine Masters, or 11 Engine Masters, sorry. It had 650 lift, because our rule said that's all you could have. 244, 248 um, duration, 104 at lobe separation. Had a dart intake I had ported with it, and it had epoxy in it, lots of it, to make it work with the raised runner head. 750 Holly, because that's all they would let you run that year. Same dyno, by the way. These are same dyno. This one made 575 foot-pounds of torque, and it made 627 uh, horsepower. This was a beast. An absolute beast. By the way, if you look at it, 3,000 RPM, 500 or 498 foot-pounds of torque to 486 at 31 on this other combination. Now, I had more compression ratio and other stuff too, but yeah, really good n n numbers there. These are NA. But remember, look how much more it picked up on torque. Now, here's what's weird. This was engine was sold to my cousin Cecil, and he put it in his truck and he ran it. 
it got he ran it for a couple of years and then he brought it back for a redo and i was like well, i'm gonna change some stuff and i can't say all of it worked i redid the heads and i i know i made those better but i had switched the solid roller camshaft i added more lift but my big problem that i made a mistake on is i kept the duration the same as the intake but i added on the exhaust 12 degrees so it went to or split anyways 256 now on exhaust and it was 108 lobe separation from 104 so what it do well it killed torque so and now it looks like 556 i should have pulled it lower and also it had to switch to this brodex, in, brodex intake because that dart intake the epoxy started coming out so i switched to this brodex intake which wasn't quite as good looked nice but it didn't make as much torque and the power was about the same oddly enough in his truck this was faster than that so we're like torque wins races not in his case it didn't he went faster this way by a considerable amount which was weird and I do plan on probably redoing this at some point and just keeping the lift the same and go back to uh, 248 and uh, maybe a 106 just so I can get some piston valve. Um, however, this is the Dino Mule. So if you've been following my channel, this is the Dino Mules. So it has a 406. It's 10, no, it's 11.2 compression ratio, solid roller cam, 260 to 70 duration, 108 lobe separation, 685 lift. You look at it this was its best one this was with the elderbrock 2892 this is a dominator though but 633 horsepower and look 500 you can call it 549 torque so wow right these are all in a now this is the turbo motors this is a 10 to 1 so it's less compression ratio than all of these the closest compression ratio was this one which is with the flat tap it 10 to 1 compression ratio that had 039, all of these had 039 um, quench, and their, none of their chambers were softened. This one, like 55 thousandths when you have the sense of pistons in the hole. Chambers are softened, has no quench hardly at all. It does have ported Dragon Slayers, which were better than everything except for the Rage Runner. The Rage Runners are better. They just are. Um, had a ported 2892, which is the same as what the Mule runs. Oh, these heads are really close to the same, I'd say. However, the lift, it has 742 lift, 720 on exhaust, and it was 250-ish duration on both intake and exhaust, 113 lobe separation. So if you can kind of tell what how much it killed, I mean, we're talking go from here to here, I lost 20 foot-pounds by doing four degrees, take another bunch out, and we get this. How much torque did it make? Hardly any. Um, looking real quick 473 473 torque at 5100 we pulled it all the way to 75 because that's where it's going to have it run to and it made a whopping 542 horsepower which is about 40 horsepower down from the flat tap it so right now some of you're like see that engine isn't that good this engine isn't made for that it is not made to be ran in a this was just to make sure things were working right before um the turbos go on which i highly recommend you guys do why in the world would you put all your stuff in the, on the engine, your turbos and stuff, on a brand new engine that's never been broke in? Take it to the dyno, dyno NA. They've got a carb or something they can use to dyno it there so you can find a problem, which we did. Thankfully, we did that because finding it in the truck would have been a pain. This is going to have a big single turbo, and he's going to turn all the boosty cans, so like 35 pounds or more. I think more. He said all until he runs out of injectors. It'll be running on methanol as well. Did we dyno on methanol? No, it was dyno on 110 octane. Do we need to? No, we probably really should have done it on pump gas. It would have made more power. But anyway, I'm showing you this just to show how much the quench and the camshaft events kill power in A. But in the high boost deal, this thing is going to live. So the closest combination to it really is this. This still had a half a point more compression ratio. The heads, these heads are actually better. The intake, better. The carbs were the same, 1,000 CFM. The camshaft, this one has more lift, and of course, the solid roller should have been better. But you kill the events of it and the quench, you just ain't coming back from it. Now, I do want to show you one other thing, too, because he's like, man, I really would like to have seen 550, right? We're test swing with 1,000 CFM. Is he going to run that? No, because if you look at the picture, you'll notice he's got these big, huge billet atomizer injectors in there, and they're made to run methanol. So he's not even running a carb, obviously. He's just going to have a hat. Um, so it... The carb was just what we ran, but I was like, well, you know what? I've got my Dominator here. Let's try with that. This will shock you. Yeah, if 
my pages are turned. This is what it did with the Dominator. So it went from 544 horsepower, essentially. The Dominator made it jump up to 576, 77 horsepower. And the torque went to almost 500. That's a, like a 25 horsepower gain from the Dominator. Uh, by the way, it was a Dominator with the HVH adapter, which you can, you've probably seen on many of the dyno tests I've done. Yeah, the Dominator made a huge difference. So uh, we actually have an overlay, so you can see how much of a difference it made. Yeah, maybe this one right here. You can ignore this beginning. That's just the way you load the dyno. So if you ramp into the throttle real fast and then hit the run button, it'll make it spike that number. Then it grabs and does its thing. So you can ignore that. But yeah, this is the, the lower one you see here is with the 1000 CFM 4150. This is the Dominator, which is only a 1050 CFM. That's a huge gain. I, I'm honestly shocked on this and why it gained so much, but it was a huge gain. So yeah, I would say the Dominator is almost one of those things you're like, Frank's Red Hot Sauce, I put that shit on everything. Dominator, I put that shit on everything. I think it, it works. So it was pretty nice. But anyway... Hopefully you guys got something out of this video, so at least you have information before you comment on somebody else's video or some comment about someone about the NAAs and turbo motors. You'll understand that a good NA motor does make a good turbo motor to a point, and then you need to make changes, and then the NA numbers suck. So, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down there. I'll be happy to uh, look at them. I don't know if I have time to answer all of them. I get so busy anyway with calls and obviously grinding. But thanks for watching. Remember, I'm no Superman, and I don't know everything. I don't port cast iron heads. You guys take care.